Hallelujah. What a blessing. What an exciting time in the presence of God. I'm always excited when we get to do this. God is so, so faithful and we can't take his goodness for granted. Week in, week out, the Lord is so, so good to us. And I'm so glad that you can always find time to join me. Welcome to Faith Credible, our weekly devotional. Let's share a word of prayer before we begin. Father, we are at your feet once again. Lord, let your word go out. Let this word of God bring understanding. Let this word of God grant us wisdom to live. Grant us the ability to apply whatever we we'll learn, O oh God. Make us better by your word. Father, I pray that your spirit will hover over every word that is being spoken or will be spoken today, O oh God. And let everyone that will hear, O oh God, become better by it. May we live to testify of your goodness. And may your kingdom be better. Increase in all forms. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, we are still on the Passion Files. Hallelujah. What are we doing with the Passion Files? We are picking certain events, certain stories from the Bible. We look at them, then we take the benefits or the lessons we learn from them, and we apply it to our lives. Amen. Why do we do this? That we may be better. We might grow and be more profitable to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Get somebody involved. Get somebody, help somebody to get to know what we are doing here. Be a blessing to another person. And the Lord will definitely bless you. Hallelujah. Now today, our team is, I want to be like others. I want to be like others. And our anchor scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Let's hear the word of God. It says, We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Wow, what a word. When you compare yourself to other people, Bible is saying you are not wise. You see, most often we see the glory of other people's achievement. We look at the picture they present, whether real and sometimes unreal, and we so much want to be like them. But most often, especially for those that are real, we don't usually see the pain of the process. We don't usually see the struggle of the process. All that we see is the end product. And it looks so appealing. It looks so exciting. And we just want to have what they have. We just want to be how or be them. Hallelujah. You see, it is human for us to desire the good things of life. Yes, everybody wants to be okay. But you see, it's totally a different ball game when we are consumed with an inordinate drive to be like the next person. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just want to imitate their lifestyle. You want to have a big home like them. You want to drive the biggest car in town. You want to have a big wedding like them. Uh, have a big auditorium like them. Have a multitudes following you like them. In fact, like I mentioned, this desire to be like others or to have these good things, you know, the desire to have these good things is not evil by itself. Yeah, because as a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 31, the A part of it says, but convert earnestly the best gifts. And I like the way Amplified Version puts it. It calls it best and higher gifts and choices, graces. And Amplified says, and Amplified asks us to zealously cultivate 
them. So there are certain gifts and graces we should go for. The highest of them being love. So we have to cultivate them. But when it becomes, it consumes us. I mean, we are driven by a passion to be like the next guy in town or the guy that has the biggest money, that has the biggest um, house, whether real or not, amen, then something is not right. Hallelujah. When you are driven, so driven, not just for your assignment, but just because you want to be like the next person, it cannot be right. Hallelujah. In fact, um, Romans 13 uh, verse 9, the eighth part recommends that we shun things like this. See, for the commandment says you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. Hallelujah. Covetousness in the negative sense is not right. And if you don't take care, you find yourself being driven by envy, being driven by jealousy, being driven by greed to be like other people. And if you don't take care, you might harm yourself. We are going to look at a passage in the Bible and look at what happened to a given people that had this inordinate desire to be like others. And we are going to learn from them. And God willing, we'll be able to apply it to our lives and we'll be better. That is why we are doing this. Presenting the gospel truth in very simple form so that it makes meaning and applicable for your life. You can apply it to your life. Let's go with, go with me to First Samuel chapter 8. We are going to read verse 1 to 20. You know... With this fashion fast, we have been doing a lot of reading, 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 which is very good because many of us don't even read the Bible. Hallelujah. So this is an opportunity for you to see what is in the Word of God. Hallelujah. So go with me quickly. Let's just see what is in First Samuel chapter 8. We are reading from verse 1 to 20. And it says, As Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons to be judges over Israel. Joel and Abijah, his oldest sons, had caught in Bathsheba, but they were not like their father, for they were greedy for money, they accepted bribes and perverted justice. Finally, all the elders of Israel met at Ramah to discuss the matter with Samuel. Look, they told him, you are now old and your sons are not like you. Give us a king to judge us like all the other nations have. Samuel was displeased with their request and went to the Lord for guidance. Do, do everything they say to you, the Lord replied. For it is me they are rejecting, not you. They don't want me to be their king any longer. Ever since I brought them from Egypt, they have continually abandoned me and followed other gods. And now they are giving you the same treatment. Do as they ask, but solemnly warn them, about the way a king will reign over them. So Samuel passed on the Lord's warning to the people who were asking him for a king. This is how a king will reign over you, Samuel said. The king will draft your sons and assign them to his chariots and his charioteers, making them run before his chariots. Some will be generals and captains in his army. Some will be forced to plow in his fields and harvest his crops. And Saul will make his weapons and chariot equipment. The king will take your daughters from you and force them to cook and bake and make perfumes for him. He will take away the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his own officials. He will take a tenth of your grain and your grape harvest and distribute it among his officers and attendants. He will take your male and female slaves and demand the finest of your cattle and donkeys for his own use. He will demand a tenth of your flocks and you will be his slaves. When that day comes, you will beg for relief from this king you are demanding, but then the Lord will not help you. But the people refuse to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. 
We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. Hallelujah. Mark these spaces. We want to be like nations around us. Hallelujah. So why do they want to be like nations around them? In fact, there are so many lessons that we will learn from this point. Let's just go straight and see what God will have us understand from this passage. Very interesting things. The first thing we can learn from this passage. Remember, Samuel was the judge. Hallelujah. He took over from Eli. And now he's old. His sons have become the next judges. But unfortunately, they are not doing the things, uh, doing it the way that someone would have ordinarily done it. And so the people said, give us our own king. It's not just give us our own king that is the issue. They said they want to be like the other nations. And God warned them. God said, when you convert to be like the other nations, this and that is going to happen. And you're going to cry out and I will not listen. What lessons are there for us to learn? Number one, to begin with, when we focus on other people's successes in life, we are bound to belittle our own privileged position. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we focus on other people's successes, whether real or unreal, especially in this age, of the internet you go you see all kinds of things people will pose and be in front of somebody's car or inside somebody's car take a picture and you are like ah that guy he has made it he has a brand new car i'm still walking and ah look at that building it looks so glorious ah my beloved the bible is saying or oh, from this what we have just read one lesson we need to learn or uh, take in life is that when we focus on others success we are bound to belittle our privileged position why am i saying this god is the owner of the world and in several places he has identified the people of israel as his firstborn and as his special people and he doesn't joke with israel hallelujah and among all the nations he has selected Israel to be his firstborn. And you believe in me, there are privileges that goes with being the firstborn. And I said that he has mentioned it in several places that Israel is his special. Let's look at the book of Exodus. Let me quickly read Exodus for you. Exodus chapter 4 from verse 22 to 23 says, and the New Living Translation says, Then you will tell him, This is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I commanded you, let my son go, so he can worship me. But since you have refused, I will now kill your firstborn son. Now, you remember the story of the of Israelites moving from Egypt. They have been slaves. But a time came, God said, I want them to go. Now, Egypt said, we are not releasing the slaves of ours. And God said, they may be your slaves, but they are my firstborn son. And since you have refused to let them go, I am going to kill your firstborn sons. Can you understand? Even at that state, God was willing to kill the firstborn sons of the Egyptians for the sake of Israel. That is how privileged they are. Now, go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31 verse 9. It says, tears of joy will stream down their faces and I will lead them home with great care. They will walk beside quiet streams and on smooth paths where they will not stumble. For I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my oldest son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these two scriptures have made us to understand that Israel is in a privileged position and for whatever reason whether ignorance whether foolishness forgive my language or plain stupidity they want to leave their grand position their privileged position and be like others how true is this about you and i 
Sometimes, because what will be has we have not gotten to the point that God will cause us to manifest His glory in our lives. We are seeing other people's glory and we think that that is all there is. And we so desperately want to be like them. Ah, how ignorant we can be. How foolish we can be. And most often, you see men and women live their assignment in life and pursue other people's assignment. Why? They want to be like them. Bible said in our anchor scripture, when you compare yourself to other people, you are not being wise. Can you have a little patience so that the glory of God, the gifts of God that he has deposited in your life will manifest? It is with time. I will say, everybody, everything according to season. Every man has their season. It may not be your season yet. Don't sell your privilege position just because you think the other person is better. Number two, don't take actions based on your current pain and challenges. Always think of the future. Now, Joel and Abijah, they were indeed not doing what ought to be done. But they were not the first. In fact, before Samuel came on the scene, the sons of Eli, who were supposed to take over from Eli, were also not doing the right thing. What did God do? He did not leave his people. He went ahead to pick someone to come and be the perfect judge for his people. So that makes you to understand that if uh, God can do this, Per chance, or perhaps if the people of Israel would have waited a little while, he could as well have taken away the sons of Samuel and bring somebody that would be okay and judge Israel rightly. But then they couldn't wait. Hallelujah. They couldn't wait. So whenever you will find yourself constrained, whenever that situation is terrible, and I'm not underestimating your pain, Hallelujah. I'm not. Not in the least. I will, I will encourage you to try to have a check, a control, and work it a little bit more and see what God will do. Don't take a hasty decision. Hallelujah. Number three, don't sacrifice your future because of today's comfort or discomfort. Hallelujah. You see, the people were under constraint. And I don't know how long they have been you know, going through that, you know, kind of injustice where men pervert justice. It can be very, very frustrating. You understand? And so, um, they want a change. They, they definitely want a change. But God sent to, um, sent back to someone and said to him, go and tell the people. Someone himself was done cast. He was feeling down. But God said, the people have not rejected you. Don't take it personal. It is between me and them. They are my children. I am their father. It is me that they have rejected. Hallelujah. And he said, one them of what is going to happen. How often have we seen, we, we see uh, the end of where we are going. You know the path you are walking on. The, the direction you are going is no good. It's not going to end you right. But you are bent on going on that way of distraction. Why? Because you want your immediate gratification. Because you want immediately to be relieved of the pain. Beloved, have a check. Have a check. Hallelujah. I am not definitely underestimating the process. I've been there where I have to wait patiently. It was not easy. I wish I can tell you that was the best of me. No. But then, in God's own time, he makes everything beautiful. Everything beautiful. Go back to God. Go back to God. Don't allow yourself to be driven because of today's comfort or today's discomfort. Hallelujah. For some, because of what they are enjoying, they don't care about how the future is going to be. You know what you are enjoying is not the right thing, but you are bent on enjoying it and you are damning the future. And for some, what they are going through now is so discomforting. 
And so they want to quickly be relieved of it. Have patience and wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Number four, your ungodly desire to be like others may lead you sacrificing your freedom, your glory, your position, your blessings, and so many good things. Be careful. Did you hear that? Your ungodly desire to be like others. You don't know how they made it. You don't know how they achieve it. In fact, let me give you an example. During the process, when we had to wait for our children, now, I looking back, there were years when I feel that there was a covering of God over my life. I can be there, we dedicate so many children in church, you see pregnant women, I never felt any iota of uh, envy or jealousy. I felt with all joy I was dedicating children. Now, looking back on hindsight, it couldn't have been me. No. No, I don't have that courage. I realized that it was the grace of God that covered me through that process. You know, we were absolutely doing what we needed to do. We were going to hospital and doing what we needed to do. But through the frustrations, I realized that the grace of God covered me for the number of years, 11 years to be precise, for us to go through that process. And now today, when you see these lovely toys, you're like, oh, she has beautiful children. Of course, it took 11 years of working it out. So I have this understanding that even when you are delayed, even through the process, and you trust God, God has the ability to cover you with his grace. And you can go through the pain and you look back, your life becomes a testimony. I want to encourage you. If only you can apply it. Hallelujah. So don't allow your ungodly desires to be like others. Deny you or cause you to sacrifice your freedom, your glory, and your future. It is only God that knows the future. And he holds it in his hand. And I can assure you, if you are a believer, the future is bright. The future is great. The future will be rewarding. The future will be satisfying. Hold on. Hallelujah. Number five, relying on God is always better than relying on man. Don't allow your fears to push you to forget the faithfulness of God. Hmm. Relying on God is always better. When God says wait, it might appear foolish. Please, brother, sister, wait. Hallelujah. It is always better. Now, if you do a little research, you understand that Israel's actions were also propelled by their fears. And, you know, they were afraid that they, uh, uh, another king was going to ride over them. So they were afraid. So they were propelled by that fear. And they forgot that severally God has delivered them from more terrible things and more terrible kings. So when fear want to take hold of you, remember those times that God has delivered you. Remember those times you could have killed yourself, but God saved you. Remember those times that you could have been destroyed, but God saved you. If God did it yesterday, beloved, God can still do it tomorrow. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. Kill that desire, that inordinate desire to have what others have at all costs. Are you getting me? It is good to possess good things of life. And by all means, work towards it. Work towards it according to the process. Hallelujah. But don't jump the gun. Don't, you know, have that inordinate desire to have money at all costs. To have wealth at all costs. Hallelujah. To have that building at all costs. No. No. It's not a do and die affair. If God can take care of ordinary bears, lilies of the field, their glories, God takes care of them. You are worth more than them. Can I submit to you? Rely on God. Rely on God. Rely on God. And most especially, 
trust him and that should be the number six never trust in your own wisdom and abilities rather trust god no matter how educated you are no matter how intelligent you are no matter how connected you are no matter who you know beloved our wisdom will fail us your wisdom will fail you but when you rely on the wisdom of god god will take you and hold your hand to the right place you ought to be in life. And when you get to that point, it will not just bring blessing to you, it will bring glory to Him. Hallelujah. I believe you've been blessed. So this morning, as you are stepping out, say to yourself, I might desire the good things of life. It is good to desire them, but I am not going to be so driven that I will compare myself to other people, that I will compare my situation to other people, and I want to do that which is not right. May the Lord empower you. May the Lord grace you. May the Lord grant you wisdom. May the Lord grant you stability to withstand the pressures of this life and come out the way God wants you to come out. May He bless your cause and may He bless the work of your hand in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's have the question for this week. In what areas of your life do you often feel like being like others? Are they godly or just you being covetous? Action point. Bring every unhealthy comparison before God. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to overcome them. Hallelujah. Now, fair declaration, I am peculiar. I am graced for unique assignment. I shall not compare myself to others. With Christ, I am enough. I will stand out in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Now, let's have our prayer points for this week. Kindly pray along, and I'm trusting God to see you through. Prayer point one, Father, help me not to engage in unhealthy comparison of myself with others. Prayer point two, pray and ask God to deliver you from uncontrolled desires that will make you to sacrifice your future for today's bread. Prayer point three, pray for God to deliver as many as are caught up in unhealthy comparison, especially in your family, in your workplace, and in your church. May all receive the grace of contentment from today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's have a Bible reading for this week. Day one, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 26, and 32 to 33. Day 2, Philippians 4, 12 to 13. Day 3, Hebrews 13, verse 5, and 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 7. Day 4, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Day 5, 1 Timothy 6, 10 to 11, and Proverbs 28, verse 6. Day 6, Proverbs 16, verse 8, and finally, day 7, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 13. Hallelujah. Now you see how everything is arrayed here. We are still on this. Get a copy of your own market share today. And if you want us to send it as a gift to somebody, just get in touch with us. Hallelujah. And we are going to package this so nicely and we'll deliver it. This is a wonderful devotional that will help you read the Bible in one year. Make an investment in somebody's life. Give it out as a birthday gift. Give it out for special occasions. You can even use it. If you need the book purchases, definitely the prices are going to come down. And then we'll supply it to you. And you can use it to be a blessing to people for your weddings, for your adorings, and so on and so forth. God is going to use it to be a blessing to other people. Make an investment in somebody's life 
today. And once again, I want to encourage you, based on what we have done today, for those of you that are still waiting on God for your marriages, I don't know or how, but I'm going to pray for you. You are waiting on God for children. You are waiting on God for various things. And it's, it appears as if the life has given up on you. So you have been tempted to look at your neighbor and compare yourself to them. And you are depressed. I'm going to pray for you. God is going to deliver you today. Let's share a word of prayer. Father, I bring uh, this brethren before you. Wherever they find themselves comparing themselves, their abilities to other people, and by so doing, they have the enemy has stolen their joy. The enemy has made them to become depressed. The enemy has given them undue work. When they are supposed to be resting, they find themselves struggling. Trying to be like other people. Lord, I pray that your word will come over them. Your word will enable them to grasp of you. You said that we should, you know, take of you for you are lowly. And your burden is light. And your yoke is light. And when we take of you, we shall find rest for our souls. I pray this word into the life of them that are hearing me. That they will take of you today and they will find rest for their souls. So much grappling of things, so much uh, stressing will cease. Lord, I pray that from today there will be a remarkable change in their lives. May they be blessed. Help them, Lord, to step out of that self-defeating action of comparing themselves to other people. Help them to understand that they are enough and that your grace is sufficient for each and every one of them. May they be blessed. May the Lord bless you as you're listening to me. May the Lord cause you to increase. May the Lord cause you to be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe you've been blessed. Once again, remember to get a copy of this. And next week, we are coming out again with an amazing um, uh, episode of Passion Farm. Don't give up yet. There's so much in life that is there for your taking. You are going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Now remember to share these messages. Let people hear it. Let them be encouraged. If you need to uh, counseling, write to us. We'll help you. We'll speak to you by the message of God and you shall be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, till I come away again next week. Do have a pleasant week. God bless you. Amen. Reverend Julia is a counselor, children's church minister, conference speaker, and a teacher of God's word, grace with a healing anointing. For bookings and updates on her messages, devotionals, and related events, please call 055-081-2255 or 020-77-58227 or send an email at rev.juliaoju at gmail.com. Like and follow her social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Rev Julia Oji. So she comes your way again with another session of the Faith Cradle. Stay strong and favored. God bless you. Connect with Apostle Freddie and Julia Oji for a heavenly experience of glory with a host of other believers at the Miracle Revival Chapel International. Friend, join any of our services on the days on your screen. A divine encounter awaits you. God bless you.